Lawmakers on both sides agree immigration reform is needed. The debate boils down to how it should be implemented. Minutes later, firecrackers were going off inside. Police say it was a crude device, but it could have injured or killed. Senior White House advisor David Axelrod says the economy is improving. The White House expecting third quarter growth this year. The man left, but later came back with a duffel bag he claimed had a bomb in it. The hospital reopened and is operating normally at this hour. Please continue their search for a suspect. Now residents say they had no warning, but officials say if another tornado hits, they'll be ready. The events that got underway at 5 o'clock here at Sullivan County Park and Lake. They'll be going all the way through 4th of July. Tonight at 8, the Blue River Band's going to take the stage, so come on by. Get your weekend started off early. The search is on tonight for a suspicious man seen leaving New York's Times Square minutes before a car bombing attempt. Suicide bomber killed at least 88 people when he detonated 550 pounds of explosives after parking his van on the athletic field in the town of Lockheed Morwat. And in Iraq, two car bombs exploded within feet of each other today in southwestern Baghdad, killing one person and wounding 20 others. President Obama said today the Christmas terrorist Umar Farouk Abdul Matalib has connections with Al-Qaeda. The bomb squad moved in and detonated the device. No one knows if this incident is connected to the car bombing attempt in New York. It's a crime that has sent shockwaves through the small town of Petersburg, Indiana. A couple, Stephen Quick and Samantha Light, charged with molesting young children they were hired to babysit. One of them, their own two-month-old daughter. The case, a parent's worst nightmare. I don't want to have to wake up every day thinking about what happened to him. Light pled guilty to three felony charges of child molestation. A judge Wednesday sentenced her to 125 years in prison for her crimes. One day, she's not a safe, trusting person anymore. Larissa Smith's six-year-old boy was one of the victims. Wednesday's sentencing made her reflect on the pain the case has caused. It was very painful. It was infuriating. It was infuriating. It was, it was painful, but it was very infuriating. Still angry? I'm very angry. In court, Samantha Light wept as she read a statement in her own defense. She says Stephen Quick threatened to kill her if she didn't molest the kids. Though she cried, Smith, Light's former best friend, says she has not shown remorse for the crime. Those were not sincere tears. Those were please have pity on me tears. In her statement, Light told the court about her history of physical and emotional abuse. Some rationale in her mind for the crime she committed. She told the court she herself was a victim, but the real victim's families aren't buying it. I'm glad that this is coming to an end. And I'm glad that she's going to be sitting in there for the rest of her life. The family members of the young victims cried through much of the hearing, listening to the judge give graphic detail about the use of sex toys on kids, sodomy, and other horrifying acts. It's hard. It's hard to hear it over and over and over again. It's not something that you want to think about every day. Samantha Light was led out of the courtroom in handcuffs, silent, to begin Samantha, serving her long sentence. Are you still a proud mommy, Samantha? As she my space says, Samantha Light, a woman who some in this small town call a monster, a woman who's confessed to committing acts so awful we can't describe them on television. She's now headed to the Department of Corrections where she'll spend the rest of her life in prison. We're not talking about the same bullying that we talked about 50 years ago. And so we have to respond differently to it. Mental health professionals say it's about knowing what's going on, not only with the victim, but with the bullies themselves. Being able to identify bullies and those that are being bullied so that they can step in early, a lot of education. At the Southwest School Corporation in Sullivan, Superintendent Walter Hoke says catching the harassing behavior early can mean a world of difference. In schools, there's always going to be bullying taking place. Uh, there's always going to be some harassment. We try to minimize it as much as possible. In the United States, 32% of public school students ages 12 to 18 say they've been bullied. Students are the ones who know what's going on. Unless we can open the lines of communication with them, this isn't going to be effective. School officials say parents need to talk to their kids about bullying. They also know that kids sometimes have trouble opening up. Dr. Ray at Regional Hospital says there are things parents can look for to find out if their kids are being victimized. Tend to show signs of not wanting to go to school, isolating themselves at home or maybe at school just kind of staying off to themselves. Forty states now have anti-bullying laws on the books, but some say the laws aren't enough to deter the bullies. 
Research shows that the zero tolerance policy is not doing what it needs to do. And school officials hope parents and students come forward to let them help fix the problem before it's too late. If you know about it, we need to be aware of it as well.